Oh, a little bit about the beginning of Pro Tools. When we're first getting started with a new Pro Tools session, I'm gonna hit Command N. When you launch Pro Tools, it'll show up with this screen right here. And this is like my, what they call the dashboard. Now this dashboard over on the left-hand side, you have three different things you can click on. You have Create, Recent, and Projects. Now Create is when you wanna create a new project from scratch. Recent is if you wanna open a project that you've been working on recently. And then projects is something you can work on with somebody in another part of the world. As long as you have an internet connection, you can work on these projects together. It's kind of like using Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that uh, for audio, for Pro Tools. And it works really well. It's not something that I use very often, but it, people like it who do work remotely and work in various places in the world. So it's, it's a relatively new thing. It came with Pro Tools 12. Uh, which relatively new, like two or three years ago is when it first came out, maybe a little bit more at this point. I don't remember now, but it's been around for a little while, so it's pretty t tried and tested, uh, but it's also, again, like I said, just a few years old. So we're gonna go ahead and click Create here, and good morning, Brian, and uh, I'm gonna rename this. I'm just gonna call this one um, Pro Tools Lab 1, and I'm gonna put the, the uh, 2101 12 a one There we go. So we're gonna use lab one as our, as our demonstration today to show you everything. And this asks me, where do I wanna save it? You know, how, what, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna use a collaboration? In order to do the collaboration, I have to sign in, which I don't ever do really, so I'm not gonna leave that on. And then down here it says create from template. Now we could create this from a template that we've set up ahead of time. We're gonna talk more about this in another lesson in a few weeks. So local storage just means it's gonna save it on my hard drive here or something connected to my computer. And we're gonna go down here in the bottom and we have all these options here. Now these options are very important and that's kind of what we're describing right here. So first we need to select what is our file type? What kind of file type do we have? Are we gonna use an AIF or a WAV file? I recommend always using WAV files. Those are the most compatible across the board. Uh, they just work on every computer, everything, every device. Uh, AIFs will work nowadays, but they were developed by Apple and uh, Windows machines didn't use to play AIF files natively. I think nowadays they do, but I, I could be, that's probably because of some kind of extension plugin or something. But everything can play a WAV file, so just use WAV files. You cannot use MP3 here. It's important to note that MP3s are compressed audio files. You cannot edit an MP3. Anything that allows you to drag an MP3 in and cut it up and edit it, that's actually converting it into a WAV file or an AIF file in the background. So for example, if you use Ableton Live and, and you drag an MP3 in, it doesn't say that it's converting it, but it is converting it in the background. It's kind of doing it secretly. So you have to be aware of that. If you drag it into Logic or Pro Tools, it'll tell you it's converting it. Uh, FL Studio, I don't know what that one does. But um, WAV files uh, are what you should be using all the time. So, and if you drag in an AIF file, it's fine. This is really talking about when you're recording stuff, how's it recording it onto your computer. If you're, if you're using a session and you're dragging in AIF files, you can use AIF and WAV files next to each other nowadays in Pro Tools. All right, so that's right here. The file type is right over here. File type, AIF or, or WAV. We can click on that and select it. So we're just gonna use WAV there. Now the next one here is sample rate. And you can see I've got a bunch of options here. I've got 44.1, 48, 88.2, 96, 164.4, well, sorry, 176.4 and 192. These are all in kilohertz. Now the sample rate, as you learned in mod one, the sample rate is how many samples per second the uh, machine is kind of recording the sound. It's like snapshots of the sound. It's like documenting the sound in that point in time. And it's a lot. This is 44,100. That's what the kilohertz is, 44,100. And the, you know, you don't really have to think about it too, too much, but you do have to know a little bit about what's going on here. And that's, uh, I've got that written down over here, where it says sample right here, audio and video. Now, if you're doing audio, if you're making music for MP3 or for, you know, for a, a CD or a vinyl or whatever it is you're making the music for, for people to listen to, not necessarily for, uh, if you're not doing like dialogue for a movie, if you're not doing Foley stuff like that, if you're making music uh, for the, the, the main goal of it is 
for people just to listen to, not to see, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use 44.1 or 88.2 or, and you can see in my case, I also have 176.4 here as well because that's my audio interface can do that. This is audio standards. The 44.1 is what audio becomes eventually. So if you wanna record it more like detailed, for example, if you're doing really delicate music like, like acoustic guitar or or orchestra stuff, then you might want to record it at like a higher sample rate here. Most of the time, 44.1 is, is fine though. Like it's not, it, nobody can really, like nobody who's buying this stuff from you or paying for it is really gonna be like, oh my God, that was recorded at 44.1 and not 48 or 40 or 88 too. Now the big difference though is that the, um, the, the standard for audio like listening to it, like CDs and stuff like that is 44.1. The default for video, digital video is 48 kilohertz. And I do not know why they decided to change it uh, for video. I'm sure there's a reason. The reason doesn't matter to, to me. So I don't know why. I've never researched into why it's like that. I'm sure somebody could tell me, but please don't because I don't care. Um, not right now, I don't care anyway. Uh, and Really what you need to know is that if you're doing your, if you're doing audio for video, if it's gonna, like if you're doing mixing for, uh, for a, a video for like YouTube or something like that, you should be doing all your work in 48 or 96, some kind of double of that, 96 or 192, but really 48's good enough. Um, if you're doing, it's gonna end up on, for people to listen to, then 44.1. That's what that means there. Next up is your bit depth. Now the bit depth, helps us with the dynamic range of stuff. A higher bit depth is better. We do have options here, 16, 24, and 32-bit float. Um, I still use 24-bit. I haven't really gotten around to using 32-bit float. Uh, so 24-bit is what I would recommend. It's what I use. Um, but again, I haven't done a lot of research into 32-bit float yet. It's the, it's the thing that's relatively new, and so more and more programs are utilizing it. Um, eventually I might change my tune there because more bits is, is better for stuff, but really 24 bits is, is fine. I recommend doing everything at 24 bits. I don't do anything at 16 bit anymore. Uh, if you are going to go to CD, the standard for CD is 16 bit 44.1, but really who uses CDs anymore? It's not like anybody says, oh, I missed the sound of a CD. Nobody cares about CDs. People will say they missed the sound of vinyl. Fair enough. People will say they missed the sound of a cassette tape, which is ridiculous, but whatever. Sure. But nobody's going to be like, I really want my stuff to be on a CD because that lovely sterile like digital audio sound you get that from an mp3 anyway so whatever just keep it you know keep it on an mp3 be happy um or just use a wave file on your on your iphone or something like that so keep it at 24 bit um you don't need to do 16 bit if you are putting it onto a cd something else will convert it further down the road and whatever uh so that's your bit depth there and the only reason why it even matters is because cd quality i've got a little pink dot there so you can see 44.1 16 bit is CD quality. Uh, over here, I.O. settings. If you don't know what to do with this, do not use last used. Always use stereo mix. Only use last used if you are only working in your own studio and you're not bringing stuff in from other studios. Do not use anything other than uh, stereo mix. Just use stereo mix. If you don't know, use stereo mix. If you are in another place, uh, a studio, and they have the I.O. settings for the hardware that they have in the studio. So for example, at SAE, we have the I.O. settings in the, in the audience for the um, audio interface in there, then use that. But if you don't know, if you're, if you're unsure, just use stereo mix and that's gonna be like a default stereo uh, input output situation. And we're gonna talk about the I.O. settings at a later date because it's very important that you understand about I.O. settings, but not today. So just use stereo mix for that. Now, next we're gonna click interleaved. Hello, computer, what's going on here? Hold on a second. There we go. So next we're gonna use uh, interleaved here and just turn that on. We're gonna talk about that in just a second here, uh, why we should use interleaved. But before we do that, we're just gonna go over here and go in here. You have two selections here. 
prompt for location or you can put it in a default location all the time so you don't have to keep telling it where to go if you just know where all your Pro Tools files go you can just put it there all the time and that's what this is for uh, if you want it to ask you where to put it every single time just use prompt for location but I'm just going to click it to go into my Pro Tools projects location and then just make sure this is checked here open on startup show on startup there so you, this is going to open up this dashboard every time before I click that button though, let's go over here to interleave to talk about this real quick. Um, now just, uh, if you, um, if you know, if you've heard of interleaved before, just kind of put a thumbs up in the chat here, uh, or let me know that you've heard of interleaved here, just so I can get a show of hands of people who've heard of interleaved. And we're gonna talk about interleaved here in just a second. I'm gonna get a little sip of water while I'm waiting for that. Interleaved uh, is something that has kind of two meanings here. It, I mean, it has the same meaning, but we're gonna use it in two different places here while I'm kind of waiting to see who all has heard of interleaved here. Uh, so, yep, yeah, cool, cool, good. Okay, a few of you are kind of coming through here. Thumbs up, <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, just from the quiz, okay, fair, fair, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nice, nice, good, okay, cool, cool, cool. So interleaved, basically what it means is if you have an audio file, you've got two channels in that audio file, right? You've got your left and your right. I've got my left ear, I've got my right ear, and uh, only only six people, seven people, okay, cool. Um, I've got my left ear and I've got my right ear. That's actually two separate audio files. We've got one audio file for the left speaker and one audio file for the right speaker. And what that means is interleaved is where you have those two separate channels together in one audio file. And that's what you use for iTunes um, or any kind of media player like iTunes or something like that. So it's interleaved here. If I have a WAV file, and let's say it's a 10 megabyte file, it's about, you know, whatever, 10 seconds or whatever. And that WAV file would be one file, it would be called loop.wav if it's interleaved. But if it's not interleaved, Pro Tools would separate it out into two separate files, loop.wave.l for left and loop.wave.r for right, and it separates it out. Now, in Pro Tools itself, the way it deals with the stuff is no different. It looks exactly the same, interleaved or non-interleaved. But in the background, it's creating actually a separate audio file for your left and right sides. So what that means, and this is very important, is it means that you cannot play that audio file properly in iTunes. What would happen is if you take, if you make something non-interleaved and you drag it into iTunes, it's only gonna play the mono file, the left file or the right file. It's not gonna play both. So you're only gonna hear the left side or the right side right in the middle of your headphones. It's gonna sound like it's in the middle, but it doesn't have any stereo information. It's not going left and right. It's only right in the middle. So you're only hearing half of the song, really. Now, it might sound pretty good. It depends on how the song was mixed. If the song is an old song and it was, it's a mono song anyway, just mixed in mono, this stuff back like from the 60s and before, 1960s and before, then, uh, then it's gonna sound fine. Everything's gonna sound exactly the same. But if it's a modern song where you've got stuff on the left-hand side and stuff on the right-hand side, then you're gonna have a lot of problems and not a lot of problems, but it's just gonna, you're only gonna be hearing half of the song. It's not gonna be the whole thing. So, you know, if you're not, if your ear is not trained and you're not really, if you're new to all this stuff, you might say, well, Tony, it sounds exactly the same to me. That's fair enough now, but eventually you're gonna hear that difference. You're gonna be like, wow, that's a huge difference. So anytime you see the word interleaved, always check the box unless you are doing it, unless you know why you're not checking the box. If you're, when in doubt, check the box, okay? Uh, so in this case here, we wanna make sure we check the box. Now I said it comes in, in two different places, once in the beginning here, and what this means is that if I'm recording stereo things into Pro Tools, it's gonna to keep it as, as one single file, as a stereo file. Also means that when I'm dragging and dropping 
uh, loops and audio files into my Pro Tools session, it's gonna keep everything stereo. If I turn this off, what happens when I drag things into Pro Tools, it's actually going to copy that file and split it into two separate files. You don't need to do that. Just keep it so it's not making copies of everything. So just keep it as interleaved right there. And the other place that it uses this interleaved button is at the end when you're bouncing out your session, when you're recording your session uh, for other people to listen to, you have a box there that says interleaved. Definitely check that box there. That's arguably more important than this part right here. This part right here, if you don't check the box, you're not gonna really, um, you're not really gonna notice the difference sound-wise, but if you if you don't check the box at the end, you're gonna notice the difference sound-wise. You're gonna be like, why is my song, like why am I missing half the instruments or half the stereo? Why, why is it not doing all that cool stuff that I put in? I used automation and plugins to make panning happen left and right and left and right and all that stuff. Why am I not hearing that? If you don't check the interleave box at the end, that's why, okay? Monique says, agreed, thank you so much for explaining this, made it 100%. Awesome, glad to, glad to hear it. <clears throat> all right. So we've gone through, we've done all this stuff here, we've set everything up, we've got, let's just double check real quick, we got wave, we got 44.1, we got 24 bit, we got a stereo mix, we got interleaved, we got the name, Pro Tools Lab 1, 2101, W12A1, that's the class, hit create, boop. And now it presents me with a blank screen. Depending on what you were doing last with Pro Tools, it's gonna show you a couple windows or not a couple windows. <clears throat> so this is Pro Tools. It is a big empty box, which is a bit intimidating. I remember the first time I tried to use Pro Tools, I was like, what? I remember actually, now that I think about it, the very first time I ever saw Pro Tools at all was at a party when I was in college. And um, <laughs> it sounds like the beginning of like a how I met your mother story. It, you know, it was just sitting across the room and I, and I looked into its eyes and I just thought, wow, that Pro Tools is beautiful and it's been love ever since. And that was uh, my sophomore year of college. I'll never forget it. Uh, no, not like that exactly, but I was at a party and some guy had Pro Tools running in his like bedroom. He had it like on a little computer and I was like fascinated. I was like, whoa, that's, uh, <laughs> that's really cool. What is that? And he was like, oh, it's this program called like Pro Tools or something because this is like 1994. It was, you know, this is a long time ago. And um, I was like, oh, that's super cool. You can do all this stuff. And because it was a party, we didn't like sit down and really talk about it too much. He just had it on on his computer. It wasn't even like, he wasn't even like an audio guy. I don't know why he had it at all. But um, <clears throat> most, of this, most of what people used back then was, um, uh, there was one program that I had a friend that used a lot that was for Windows and uh, Sony bought it, not Sony, Adobe. It became Adobe, uh, what is it, Adobe, um, uh, here, wait, I have it on my computer. Do I have it here? I don't have it loaded. I don't have it here on my sidebar here. Whatever Adobe's audio editing software is uh, right now, I forget what the name of it is, but it became, it became that. It was called something else back in the day, and people used it a lot um, for editing audio and stuff like that, but uh, it's, I, I never used it because it was Windows only for the longest time. <clears throat> now you can use it for Mac and stuff like that. But nowadays, if I want to do some audio editing stuff, I'll just dr throw it into Pro Tools just because I'm so comfortable with Pro Tools. So this is a big empty screen here, and this is the first time you look at it, it you're gonna be kind of intimidated because it doesn't give you any hints as to what to do. And it, the first thing we're gonna learn about, the most important shortcut you're gonna learn, and, and also, just so you know, I'm gonna be talking about everything in terms of uh, Mac. Please don't keep stopping me and asking me about the Windows uh, equivalent. If I can remember it, I'll, I'll tell you off the top of my head, but just know, and just in your head, translate it. Anytime I say hit command on a Windows, that's control. The command key on a Mac is equal to the control key on a Windows machine. <clears throat> so every time I hit uh, Adobe Audition, yep, thank you, BX Beats. Every time I hit, uh, every, every time I say hit command equals or command blah, 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 or command whatever, please don't stop me and say, wait, what is that on a Windows machine? Just know that it's control equals or control whatever. And thank you, yes, cool edit. Yes, 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 that's the program. Yeah, so I actually, 
I actually used Cool Edit a lot. I didn't have a Windows machine, but my good friend who I did a lot of music stuff with, he had a Windows machine and he had Cool Edit. And if you're like a super nerd, uh, I, I don't know if you are or not, but he actually did all his music programming in a, a program called C Sound, which is co it's like command line computer programming for music stuff. It's pretty pretty intense. So he would edit all his samples and uh, and cool edit. Oh, you used Cool Edit Pro, yeah, cool, 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 yeah, Cool Edit Pro, yep, yeah, and Cool Edit Pro is great. It's awesome. Um, it's just, it's for editing audio, not for, it's not really a DAW, although now it might have MIDI functions, but it's not really a, a DAW. It was an audio editing uh, software and it's now it's called Adobe Audition. Thank you so much for that BX Beats. So, um, so going back to the shortcuts, on a Mac, I'm always going to say command this, command that, command whatever. On a Windows machine, just please understand that I'm saying, that I'm, it means control. So when I say our most important shortcut is command equals. Uh, on a Windows machine, you're gonna use control equal. So on a Mac, I'm gonna hit command equal. On a Windows machine, control equal. And let's see, do I have my... Uh, I thought I had Keycaster here. I could put this up here too, which kind of shows you what my shortcut is. So you can see that up in the corner there. I'll just put that right there in the corner. <clears throat> So you can see that if I hit a shortcut, it'll show you the shortcut in the corner there. So if I ever don't have that on, please let me know. Hey, please turn on your key casting uh, software, Tony, because sometimes I forget. So the most important shortcut we have is command equals. Here, let's click on this. There we go. Boom. I hit command equals and it will flip my screens. Now Pro Tools has two main windows. We've got the edit window and we've got the mix window and you can see it up here in the top which one it is. Now another thing about Pro Tools is that if you close the red dot here, remember on a Mac, if you're used to Windows and you're new to a Mac, if I close out my window like this, Pro Tools is still open. We can see Pro Tools is still open like this. On a Windows machine, if you hit that little red box on the left hand, upper left hand corner, it actually closes the program. But on a Mac, it does not close the program. All it does is close the windows. The program is still running. We can see Pro Tools is still running. It's actually still my same session and everything. Nothing has changed with this Pro Tools. I just have to go back and hit Command Equals again. And now it pulls up my window and I can hit command equal again and now it pulls up my other window. So ultimately what, what the equals command equals is doing is it's just pulling up that other window. You can only have one edit window and one mix window open at a time. So it's just really putting that one on top of the other one right there. That is your most useful shortcut for Pro Tools besides like copy and paste and stuff like that. This is going to flip your screens, which you're going to need to do quite often. If you're ever lost like you don't see your windows on the on the screen in front of you and you you're not sure what's happened hit command equals as long as pro tools is selected it's going to pull up a window for you and it'll put you in the right place okay so that's what's going on here now this is my uh edit window this is my mix window i'm going to make a couple of um tracks here and i'm going to do that by hitting command shift in command shift in or on a windows control shift in and we got here, it's gonna pull up my new track dialog. Now, another place I can get to that is go up to track up here in the upper left-hand corner. Go to track and go to new. And if you're on a Mac or Windows, I think does this as well. Over on the right-hand side, you can see the shortcut. You should definitely be learning these shortcuts. Your most important asset for this stuff, really, for getting fast with this stuff, is learning these shortcuts. Super, super important. So I'm gonna click on this <clears throat> and pull up my new tracks dialog here. And we got a couple things we're looking at here. We can choose how many do we want to create, first of all, the number of tracks. If I mouse over it, you can see it's telling me what it does here. This is mono stereo. This is what kind of track we're going to create. This is ticks or samples. Do not worry about that today. We're going to come back and talk about this. Just leave it, whatever the default is, just leave it on that. Some tracks, the default is ticks mode. Some tracks, the default is uh, samples mode. Actually, mine is saying ticks for audio. That's not correct. Hold on a second. Let me go and change that. That's a preference. And here under, I think it's operation. I can't remember now. All right, uh, hold on to insertion. There's like a, I, I changed some stuff in here when I was like doing some, when I was um, teaching a class here. And now I can't remember. 
what this what it was I always forget where it is in here because there's just so many things in here uh, well I guess maybe I'm not gonna find it right now yeah yeah there's a there's a button in here somewhere that's like new tracks create in ticks mode all tracks create in ticks mode I can't remember where that is Oh, here we go. New tracks default to ticks time base. There we go. Cool. Okay. So then now it'll be, now mine will be more like yours. Okay. So command shift in, go down here. And now my audio track will be samples mode. Yep. Great. And I can name it if I want to. I'm not going to name it right now. And see, there's a plus button over here. I hit, click that plus button and it allows me to create, this allows me to create different types of tracks at the same time. So I could create like four audio tracks. And I'm going to create a, a couple of aux tracks as well. And aux tracks, 90% of the time should be stereo. So I'm going to create a couple of those. And I'm going to create, oops, hit create there. And you can see it created those. I, I actually hit create a little bit too soon. I didn't want to create them quite yet. Uh, let's go ahead and make, uh, let's make a master fader as well. Always stereo. Master faders are almost always stereo. And let's make a couple of uh, instrument tracks as well. You can see there's a whole bunch of other things we can we can do here. I'm, we're going to talk about routing folders and basic folders later. We're not really going to talk about VCA master tracks uh, because I don't really use them very much, and they're they're very useful, but they're very much more advanced. So we don't really need them in the kind of basic Pro Tools stuff. But we are going to talk about instrument tracks, and uh, we're going to create a couple of stereo instrument tracks as well. And you can see that this one creates in ticks mode here samples versus ticks again don't worry about that yet why it's doing that it's just it does it and that's that's how it works okay now one thing i want to pull up here while we're kind of getting used to this stuff you notice that my tracks when they got created they were highlighted like this so i can move these tracks around and if i grab them whatever tracks are highlighted are all going to move together so i can go ahead and reorder my tracks and if I want to deselect these tracks, what is up, Michael Reedy? You are pretty late there, buddy. Cool, all right. So, <clears throat> ooh, wanna become famous? I wanna become famous. Ban, boop. All right, so uh, if I want to deselect these tracks, let's say all my tracks, I just created a bunch of tracks and they're all highlighted like this. If I want to deselect the tracks, I'm going to use my Alt key. Uh, on a Mac, it's the Option key. On a Windows, it's called Alt. Uh, same thing, Alt or uh, Option. Uh, again, it's like the Command key. On a, on a Mac, it's Command. On a Windows, it's Control. On a Mac, it's Option. On a Windows, it's Alt. So if I say Option, um, Oh, you couldn't find it. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about that. Remind me to uh, explain about that in Zoom because remember, Michael, uh, that is actually in your Canvas. All the locations for everything online are in Canvas. So there's really, uh, here, I'll, I'll change that then, but there's no excuse. And, and just remember, once I'm teaching, I'm not checking emails, okay? So there's, there's really no excuse for not being able to find it because everything is listed very, very clearly in Canvas, okay? So uh, I know you were around on the first day, so I know you saw me talking about that. Just keep that in mind, okay? But I did change that for you, so you're not, you're not late today. We'll do that for you today. Uh, all right, so let's just say that all my tracks are highlighted like this, and if I, if I move them, nothing moves, right? Well, this is something, a pretty common thing when you're creating new tracks, people get confused by this. Just hold down the Alt key or the Option key and click a track, and it will deselect all of them. Now I can select individual tracks and move them around like this. All right, cool. So, awesome. Okay, so this part of the notes here uh, just talks about your different track types here. And so let's just go over this real quick since we've got everything in front of us and let's, let's make a MIDI track as well. Here, I'm gonna make one MIDI track here. And uh, you maybe noticed I just used a bunch of shortcuts for creating new tracks. Um, uh, a bunch of shortcuts for the first track. Uh, so, uh, sorry, um, sorry, I just got derailed there. Um, what was I saying? I just used a bunch of shortcuts to make this new track and we're gonna talk about those shortcuts but later on. Right now, I really want you to be using maybe a shortcut for creating the track, Command-Shift-N, but right here, 
over here, it's going to be, uh, we're going to use this mono stereo and then click around on it like this. And I'm going to show you the shortcuts uh, in a little bit, like in a couple weeks or so, because they're not super important right now for that, but it will make your life faster. So just keep in mind that there are some shortcuts for that. So what we got here is uh, I've got audio tracks, I've got aux tracks, I've got MIDI tracks, and I've got instrument tracks. So the audio tracks, you'll notice that a couple of ways we can use them uh, to see what they are is first of all, when you make a new track, it just has the name by default here. But the most important thing here is this little uh, little logo here. There's like a little a little logo right down here, and I think that's in the notes. Yep, right here. The track symbols here, and you can see what each one is. <clears throat> you got an audio track, you got an aux track, you got a master, you got VCA, you got the MIDI, and you got the instrument. And again, we're not going to talk about VCAs that much. I just put them in here in the uh, in the um, in the screenshot here. So we got that one there, and <clears throat> over here. Uh, it says the name and then the other thing I want to just tell you about is mono versus stereo. So whenever you make new tracks, you have the option to choose mono versus stereo. So it's a mono track, it's a stereo track, whatever. Uh, and I recommend a couple things for each track type. So for example, audio tracks, most of the time you're going to create mono audio tracks. If you're if you're recording audio. If you're using samples and loops and stuff like that, uh, they might be stereo. Um, but most of the time when you're recording audio, you're gonna make mono tracks. Now, some people get confused about that. Hold on a second, Tony. It, why am I using mono tracks if everything's gonna end up stereo? And the short answer is because stereo is the final product. The, the, the parts that we make it from are gonna be a combination of mono or stereo. Mono tracks, if I have a mono track, I can put it anywhere in the stereo field like this. So my final destination is my left and right on my headphones or you know your speakers, and then I can put it anywhere within that. So if I have a mono file, I could put it here on the left, I could put it here on the right, anywhere I want it to go. And that's, that's how we work with these mono files. So if I'm recording drums, for example, I'm gonna have a bunch of microphones on my drums. They're all gonna be mono, but I can move those mono files in the stereo spectrum right here using the pan pot. Now, I'm sure Kia explained this to you. Uh, please let me know if Kia explained this to you. <clears throat> so um, it's hopefully just a, uh, a review, but I find that it does help to review this stuff with people. <clears throat> mm. All right. So over here, Aux one, aux two, MIDI one, instrument one, instrument two, master all this stuff here. So these are all uh, awesome, Carl. Thank you. These are all stereo files. Now, a couple of ways we can tell if it's mono versus stereo. I'm just going to put these back into the center here. Is one, you got your meter here. The meter for a mono file will have one meter. For a stereo file, it's going to have two meters. See, all these have two meters, and this one has one meter. Also, with the pan pots. It's gonna have one pan pot for a mono file, for a mono track, or two pan pots for a stereo track. And you can see, and this is Pro Tools specific. Ableton Live and Logic are not like this, although Ableton Live now you can change it to be like this, but Live and Logic both have one pan pot for stereo files or mono files. So this is what we're talking about here is actually Pro Tools specific. It's not the same for <clears throat> Ableton and Logic. So we got that here with these, and then, um, yeah, and that's that's how you can tell if it's stereo or mono in this screen here. Now, if I go look in my edit window, if we go look in here, these are, let's see here, let's, well, it's hard to see. Yeah, here, let me make a, a stereo audio file here, and I'll just point out the difference here. So here's a stereo audio file, sorry, audio track. And what I want to point your attention to is this, this thing right here, see this right here? This is our ruler. And if you click on this, you can make tracks bigger or smaller. <clears throat> so I can make it smaller or bigger like this. But on this track, you could see on this, this, this window here, there's a ruler. And you can see on this one here has two rulers and this one has one ruler. So if I have a mono file, it's gonna have one waveform and a stereo file is gonna have two waveforms, which we're gonna see in just a moment here because we're gonna be dealing with mono versus stereo here in just a second. <clears throat> but let's just go back and take a look at the notes. 
And let's just look at these uh, track types here. Now, first of all, up here across the top, it has the shortcut Command Shift N, or remember if you're on a Windows machine, it's uh, Control Shift N. Audio uh, tracks here, they can record, edit, and play audio. That's what audio tracks do. They record, edit, and play back audio. So that's what you're going to use for when you're recording audio. If you're dealing with loops and stuff like that, you're going to use an audio track. You can put insert effects on your audio tracks. That is right up here. We can see this part where it says insert effects, or it just says inserts A through E. That is your insert effects. So I can put an effect, an insert on here by clicking on one of these boxes here and I just select which one I want to use like that boom so there's my EQ I just put an EQ effect on here and if I want to get rid of it I just click on this little dot right here and I just go no insert okay and again I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more specifically we're, we're just talking about overview of tracks right now aux track passes audio through the aux tracks do not, they don't record, edit, or play audio. Aux tracks do not, they don't record, edit, or play audio. Audio tracks record, edit, play. Aux tracks do not record, edit, or play. And if I look at Pro Tools, whoops, wrong, wrong shortcut. There we go. If I look at Pro Tools, in here we can see a difference between the aux tracks and the audio tracks. Let me go ahead and drag and drop an audio file on here. So let's go back into Finder. So I got in here. Hold on a second. Let me just put this in my put this in my Pro Tools folder. Pro Tools, Pro Tools, Pro Tools. There we are. <coughs> Okay, so if I have this here, I'm gonna go ahead and drag these into my clips folder over my clips window over here, just so we have some things to work with in here. Now what you'll notice, let me just let me just pause real quick and just show you something real quick. I just dragged this into here. There's other ways to bring stuff into Pro Tools. This is the easiest to bring it in, but you can see here if I'm just looking at these audio files on my computer, we can't tell if they're mono or stereo but in here we can see their mono or stereo. So that's what I wanna focus on real quick. We're gonna come back and talk about different ways to bring audio in. But in here, it says the word stereo next to it. It says stereo. If it's a stereo file, it says stereo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my breakbeat here. I'm just gonna drag it in, drop it right in the beginning there. And I'm gonna bring in my drum loop here, like this. So there's my breakbeat and there's my drum loop and we can see this is what the mono file looks like. It's just one waveform. And this green one here is the stereo file and it's two waveforms for the left and the right. So you can see there, it's really easy to see what's going on with, uh, with, your, um, with your stereo versus mono uh, audio files here. Now, what we're focused on right now is this aux versus the audio here. So if I look at my aux track, I cannot drag my audio file onto the aux track. If I click it, you see how it turns yellow? I can move it around, but I can't drag it down here. If I wanted to, if I go up here, I can drag my audio file up here onto these audio tracks. I just click and I drag it up and it moves it up there. It changes the color like that. But if I try to drag it onto my aux track, I cannot do that. And uh, if we didn't have such a lag, I would say, why is that? But we, because we have this crazy lag here between Twitch and, 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 and texting. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you the reason why is because it's an aux track and aux tracks do not uh, let us edit or record play audio. You cannot put audio onto an aux track. All they do is they pass audio through. So that's what it does here. Aux tracks pass audio through. They don't record, edit, or play audio. Now with an aux track, similar to an audio track, I could put I can put an EQ on here, but I can also put the same EQ onto my aux track as well, and I can open it up by clicking on it. 
I can put an EQ on either track here and it does the same thing, it EQs it. Now, you might say, well, wait, what is the whole point of an aux track? Well, aux tracks are actually the kind of secret weapon. This is what separates the, uh, the, 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 the good people from the experts. The people who are experts at using um, software like this are the ones who know how to use aux tracks effectively. And there's two main things for aux tracks. First of all, aux tracks are used for send effects like reverbs and delays. And they're also used for subgroup mixing and, and um, organizing your tracks. Both are very, very important and it's what really separates out the, uh, the, the pretty good people from the experts and the amazing people. So remember yesterday we talked about having a million dollar ear, like the whole point of everything really is to train your ears, train your brain for this stuff. Well, this is one of those things. You can get by without using aux tracks. You, you could make a beat, a song, record a song, whatever, without ever using an aux track. And I'm sure you probably have up to this point, but you're doing it wrong. If you're not using aux tracks, you're doing it wrong. If you're if you're in uh, Ableton Live, the aux track equivalent would be a return track or another audio track, and I'm going to show you how to do it. I don't know FL Studio. I don't know what they have in FL Studio. In Logic, uh, they have aux tracks as well. Logic and Pro Tools both have aux tracks, and they both work the same way. So you need to really learn how to use your aux tracks. I can't overstate that enough. It's so important. This is really really a main thing for uh, engineers and producers <clears throat> is learning how to use aux tracks. That's what you, you're gonna use them for all sorts of things. Even though on paper, they don't look as powerful as audio tracks or as important as audio tracks, at the end of the day, most of my sessions, most of what goes on is actually aux tracks. There's a lot of audio tracks, don't get me wrong, but there's a ton of aux tracks as well, almost almost to the same, sometimes even more aux tracks and audio tracks just when everything is said and done. So just keep that in mind. Aux tracks are very, very important, even though they might not seem like that at first. Okay. Uh, MIDI tracks. MIDI tracks record, edit, and play MIDI data. Now, a MIDI track, you'll notice, if I go back over here and I show you my MIDI track, we're going to... Stop that. We're going to see that there is nothing here where everything else has send and inserts right here, which I'm going to explain later. There's nothing here on my MIDI track. That's because MIDI tracks do not have inserts or sends. So just leave it at that for now. MIDI tracks, really what they have, really what they do is they send MIDI data outside of Pro Tools to an external keyboard or an external sequencer or something like that. <clears throat> uh, Bill says, I used bus tracks instead of aux tracks for a while. The UAD console made me start using aux tracks. Yeah, bus tracks are, uh, what, what are you, which, um, for bus tracks, what are you talking about bus tracks, uh, Bill? I'm curious about that. Let's talk about that over in Zoom because it's actually the same thing. So the way we move the audio around is a thing called busing. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious what, what DAW you're talking about here, uh, where you're seeing something called a bus track, because some DAWs do have a thing called buses, and some, um, some uh, consoles, like the O2R has buses, <clears throat> and the audience has a bus, uh, but we actually, it's, the, it's a similar thing to, and they also have auxes as well. So it's, it kind of, the terminology gets a little bit confusing because of different things called different ones. Oh, you're using Studio One. Okay, cool. So Studio One calls them uh, buses probably, but it's the same thing. It's an aux track in Pro Tools. It would be a bus track in Studio One, which makes sense actually. <clears throat> so uh, because Studio One comes from uh, kind of a hardware uh, situation, the people who made it worked with Cubase, but it was also made for Presonus uh, Studio. I believe it's Presonus and they're, they're a hardware company. So I'm not surprised they call it a bus track, but it's, it's probably the same as an aux track. Uh, all right, so that's our MIDI stuff here. And then we have our instruments here. And the instruments again, oh wait, let me, hold on, let's just go back and talk about that MIDI track here. The MIDI track records and edits and plays MIDI data, but there's no insert effects because there's no audio on a MIDI track. MIDI is not audio. Uh, and MIDI and audio, MIDI can cause audio to happen, but MIDI itself is not audio. And that's a little bit confusing at first. I don't want to, I don't want to go down that hole. Um, but, but, uh, but just keep in mind that MIDI and audio are not the same thing. They do uh, work together, but yeah. 
Um, then we finally have an instrument track. Now an instrument track, if we look here, it's actually a combination of a MIDI and an aux track together. Old school Pro Tools used to have to use a MIDI track connected to an aux track in order to use software instruments. Then they made an instrument track which had everything at one. And when I say old school, I mean like a long time ago. They stopped doing that in like 2002 or 2003. So we're talking like, you know, 17 years or something like that. A long time ago. So it's been a while, but that's where it came from. And actually, you can still do that. You could still put an instrument on an aux track here. I can go here and I can say, okay, let's use uh, the ARP uh, 2600 plugin. So I can load that up. And then I could tell uh, my MIDI track here to go ahead and lock into it, aux2, arp2600, boom. We'll call this one arp2600, there you go. There it is, and so now, if I played my MIDI keyboard, it's actually playing the sound. Y'all can hear that, right? Just make sure, yeah. It's actually playing the sound from the synth over here on my on my aux track here. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how that works there. So <clears throat> that's how that would work there. And that's like the old school way of doing stuff. But as you can see, we could still actually do stuff like that in Pro Tools. And it's kind of interesting. Um, it kind of brings us to an interesting point in, in how Pro Tools works. But we're going to uh, talk about that later. All right. Thanks, guys. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad y'all can hear it. <clears throat> Thanks for letting me know. Um, so the instrument track, it allows us to record, edit, and play MIDI data, or so record, edit, MIDI data, but it plays audio back. It's a combination of the MIDI and aux tracks together. So if I wanted to do the same thing I just did, nowadays what I would do is I would just grab my instruments over here, I'd put the ARP 2600 directly on the track, and now I just play this track here, and I don't have to have two separate tracks. And so it makes everything a lot easier. But in reality, really what you're dealing with is still two tracks kind of smashed together into one new track. And even Pro Tools works like that still today. It still works like that, um, which we're going to kind of dive deeper into that a little bit later because that's a little bit, it's not advanced, but it's just beyond the scope of like, this is Pro Tools. Okay, so we'll come, we'll come back to that. <clears throat> Uh, on an instrument track, you can use insert effects because insert effects are for audio and this part up here is audio. You can see it has insert and send effects. This part here works exactly the same as this parts over here. And my audio track, my aux track, my instrument tracks, this stuff right up here all works exactly the same. Okay, so no difference at all. So if once you learn one, you're good to go. Then finally, we have our master track. This is the track that all audio passes through before going to our speakers. On this one, insert effects are okay. You'll notice, however, that master tracks do not have send effects on them because you cannot send from a master track because a master track is really just showing you what's going out to your speakers. If you're clipping your master track, you're clipping the output of Pro Tools. So be careful, do not clip the master fader. <clears throat> make sure that if you're clipping stuff, uh, make sure you're pulling it down over here in your mix so you don't clip the master fader here. And again, you can use insert effects on the master fader. And this is where we would put any kind of mastering effects and stuff like that right there. All right, cool. There's our symbols again. Great. Okay, so, oh, here, today we're going to talk about this creating a new track. Now, I don't expect you all to memorize all of these shortcuts, but I really, really recommend using these shortcuts. So, for example, if I've got a drum beat here, let's just, let's just throw in a loop into here. I'm going to delete all these tracks. I'm going to delete them the proper way. Oh, that actually brings me to a, a good a good point. The way you delete tracks in Pro Tools is you highlight the tracks you want to delete, you right click, and you go down here to delete. Or you go to track, delete. There's no shortcut set up for delete. I could, you could actually set up a shortcut in uh, your computer for it, but there is no shortcut set up for it. A shortcut I would recommend would be like command delete key would be a shortcut that I would recommend for it. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to know how to do that, just real quick in, pro, in, in your Apple computer, you go up to the Apple symbol, you go to system preferences, go into your keyboard here, go to shortcuts, and then uh, go to app shortcuts here, <clears throat> hit 
and this one here, let's go to uh, Pro Tools. You just tell it which app you want it to be in. And it would be, uh, what is it, track, delete. Track, delete, I think that's how you do it. Oh, it won't let me add that in as a shortcut. Oh, that's funny, okay. So yeah, it won't let me add that in as a shortcut anyway, so. Well, yeah, I'd have to add in somehow. Yeah, that's why, that's why I've never done it before. So, um, <clears throat> so you have to figure out what you want that shortcut to be. I would actually, I, I don't know why I've never done it, but uh, I would definitely add that as an, in as a shortcut somewhere because it's super annoying to have to constantly be like going back and uh, maybe hit the clear key or something like that. It might be useful. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so how you do it is you right click and you go down to delete and just hit delete on it. There you go. So now I've got my tracks deleted out. I've got just my audio tracks. Always make sure, always, 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 always have a master fader here. You always want to make sure you've got a master fader uh, in your session. So if I want to make a new track, let's say I want to make a new uh, aux, aux track here for a reverb or something. I just hit command shift in, right, hold down command key. I've got my finger held down on my command key, right arrow, down arrow, once each, boom. There we go. Let me do that one more time. Command shift in. Why is this over here not showing me my commands anymore? Uh, that's annoying. Okay, so command shift in. Wait, hold on a second. Wow, all right, I'm gonna turn that off. Let's start that up again real quick. No, not you. Hold on a second, key caster. This one. Okay, so command shift in and then command right arrow, command down arrow, and then hit enter. And that's gonna make a stereo aux track. And look how fast I can do that. Boom. Makes it super, super quick to create your aux tracks like that. And that's all right here. The shortcuts are right here. Command left and right chooses mono or stereo. Command up or down chooses your track type. The aux track is just one track down. Command shift adds or subtracts more track, adds or subtracts more tracks, and up and down adjust the number of tracks, and then uh, tab key just moves between your tracks. So for example, if I'm over here, command shift in, and then I say, okay, I wanna make a stereo aux track, and then I wanna make a mono audio track, I wanna make three or four mono audio tracks, and then I wanna make a couple of uh, uh, instrument tracks like that. Now I've just done that, I haven't even touched my mouse or anything like that. It makes my life so much quicker. And once you get used to this, it'll help you a lot too. And really what you want is you want people to be in awe of how you use Pro Tools. You want people to be like, oh my gosh, this person uses Pro Tools so awesome. It's great to watch them work because it is. It's, it's really fun to watch somebody who's really, good, uh, who's really good at it to watch them work. All right, so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna open up my, I've, I've dragged some clips in here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the uh, drum loop here. Boop, there's my drum loop. I'm just gonna play that. I'm gonna drag the break beat in here. Cool. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a rough mix as I go, uh, just making it so it sounds pretty to me. And the way I do that is I just I just drag the, the clip in and I just moved my volume. You see how I clicked on the name of the volume here, up and down. Now, uh, real quick, uh, we're gonna go through all the stuff that we're seeing here in a second. If you don't see this stuff, don't worry about it. You could also go over here to my mix window. And I can see my levels happening. And we wanna have the master fader here because we can see if we're clipping or not. Okay, so I got this here. I'm just gonna turn that down. I'm gonna turn my levels up in my headphones a little bit. And I can adjust this, higher or lower. Now you'll notice that I cannot drag clips into my edit win uh, to my mix window here. You have to be in the edit window to drag your clips in. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my bass here. The bass is mono, boom. Cool. All right. Nice, that sounds pretty good like that right there. 
Now I'm just kind of dragging things in anywhere. I want to make sure that I'm organizing as I go to make sure everything's nice and organized. I see too many people who don't name their tracks. If you don't name your tracks, how are you going to ever know what you're working with? Not naming tracks is great for uh, amateurs. If all you want to do is be an amateur for the rest of your life and you just want to play with this stuff and not really do it seriously, that's fine. Don't don't label your tracks. I don't care. Um, but uh, if you actually want to be uh, pro and you want to work at this at a pro level, you got to start naming your tracks. And it's better to start naming them right now. Uh, why wait, right? So uh, I'm going to double click on the track name to name it. And I'm just going to call this one bass because that's what it is. I'm just looking at my clip name over here and it's called bass, breakbeat, drum loop, whatever. So I click on that. I'm going to, now here's a, here's a cool one, a shortcut for you. See here, I've got the previous and next buttons here. I can hit next and I'm going to name this one breakbeat. And it lets me go through my names, my tracks without having to click away from them. But there's a good shortcut for this. It's your command left and right arrow keys here. So the command left and right arrow keys lets me scroll through my tracks like that. And I'm going to call this one drum loop. Boom. Cool. So now I've got things named here. I'm going to put them into an order as we go, just because that's how I work. My brain, bass. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. Awesome. Then we can see these tracks a little bit bigger and smaller. And so I can click on this right here to make them bigger and smaller. I can also click right here and drag it up and down if that's more comfortable for you. That's an acceptable way to work as well. Great. So now I've got these here. Now, what we're looking at here is what we call clips. And that's what's next in our notes right here. Clips. These hold the data in Pro Tools. This could be audio or MIDI data. So right now everything is audio, but let me just show you what it looks like when we have MIDI data in something here. I'm just going to go ahead and make an instrument track here, stereo instrument track. I made that right there, boom, and I'm going to go down here, I'm going to click on my inserts, I'm going to go to instrument, and let's add in a, oh, let's use that ARP 2600, we were using that, that sounded pretty good to me. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and find the beat here. Okay, my tempo is 90 BPMs. All right. Okay, and I'm going to explain how to do that in another class. We don't, I'm not going to talk about that today. But I just want to find my tempo because now... Now my tempo my ARP would be this, the right tempo, so I'm going to go ahead and I can record that in. I'm going to hit the record button over here, I'm going to hit record up here, and I'm going to hit play. Cool. Alright, so I got that. And I can double click this, I can go in and I can edit it. But we're going to talk about MIDI recording on another day. The point isn't about MIDI recording right now. The point is just to show you uh, different different types different types of tracks here. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. Okay, and we can see how these look different here. This one here we're seeing my MIDI data. This one here we're seeing my audio data. But they're both clips and that's the main point of what I just wanted to show you is that they're both clips. This is a MIDI clip, this is an audio clip, but they're both called clips. So clips is where we just hold the data in the program. It's what we, we use and so what I can do now is I can say alright cool I got my clips in here I'm gonna turn on my grid. I've, so far I'm just working in slip mode so I'm gonna turn my grid on and if I wanted to make this a little bit longer I can hold down shift to highlight all these and I can drag them over with my option key or alt on a windows and it's going to make a copy of it and so I can zoom out a little bit and I'm going to tell you the shortcut for that in a little bit here and I can zoom out I've got my clips here and I'm starting to make a song so let's say for example that I wanted to have the beginning here let's just have this like this and I'm going to trim this over like this here check this out watch I'm just going to do a quick really quick rough edit here like this let's move this in like this boom okay cool so Sorry. Okay. 
I can just edit these. And you can kind of edit as you go. Duplicate this up. So this is, this is what we're doing here. We're working with the clips here. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of back up a little bit and show you what I did in slow motion here so you get an understanding of how we can work with these things. So that's what we're going to do right now. So clips uh, hold the data in Pro Tools. On the right-hand side of our window, we've got our clipped list. That's over here on the right-hand side. You can see it on the right side of my screen. Let me get this off the window because we don't need that here. And also, yeah, okay, cool. So in order to open this clips list, I just go down here in the bottom and you see this little button down here? This opens and closes my clips list right there. Uh, we In here we have audio or MIDI data and they look like this. Audio data has a little audio logo next to a little symbol and the MIDI data has a MIDI symbol next to it. And again, if it's stereo audio, you're going to have like a little thing like this. You can actually drag in the left or the right in Pro Tools. It works uh, separately or together. But it's also just, it says stereo right there for stereo clips. You'll notice that the MIDI clip here does not stay, it does not, it's not mono or stereo or anything like that because MIDI is not mono or stereo. MIDI is just MIDI. Okay. If I wanted to uh, have a couple things grouped together, let's say I have these right here. And I always want these to kind of work the same uh, together. I can highlight all of them and I can hit Command Option G. And with Command Option G, uh, we go in, uh, what is that? It's in the edit window, I think. Oh, it's under the clip window. And it's under here called group. And it's a clip group. Now a clip group, the reason I'm, I'm pointing this out is because they're actually pretty important in Pro Tools. And here it's a group, it's just called group one. Um, here we can just call this one. Uh, rhythm section, rhythm group, like that, and it's all my rhythms here. And uh, now, if I wanted to drag this around, all I have to do is drag one, and it drags them all around, which is pretty useful, actually. I love working with groups and Pro Tools. I wish that Ableton Live had groups. They do not have groups, but it's it's pretty awesome to be able to work with groups. Um, it's one of my favorite features. It, it really helps if you've got your chorus set up and you've got all the instruments for your chorus or your verse or whatever, and you just want to group them and then drag them over, makes life so much easier. Uh, so this is your groups here, and I can edit this. I can like take that and change that group like that. I can go over here and move that like that, and I could delete like this part out of here like this. So there's all sorts of stuff we can do with our groups. But it's just a group of clips like this right here. So that's what the group that's what a group is, and that's over here, and that's right here, it says clip groups. Now, clip selection with the selector tool. Let's go in here and over here. Here's our tools, and this, it's, this is in the notes. There's three main tools. There's the trim tool, the selector tool, the grabber tool, and all together, those are called the smart tools. So let's just take a look at that just real quick here. I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup these, command, uh, option U or in a Windows machine it would be Control Alt U and I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see so I've got my my clips separated out you can see that when I ungrouped them it kept my clip group over here on the right hand side so in my clips list if I wanted to later on just grab that and drag it back in I can just drag it in from here and it's now it's back in here as a group so you can drag in stuff from over here so you can see here's my MIDI clip that I made earlier uh, let me go ahead and uh, Let's rename this MIDI clip. Arp loop, there we go, that way I know exactly what it is. So over here, if I wanted to edit any of the stuff, this is where my tools are gonna come into play here. So over here I've got my trim tool, I've got my selector tool, and I've got my grabber tool. And you're gonna notice that these tools here have a little arrow on the bottom. What that means is if I click and hold, it actually gives me access to some more tools. We're gonna to talk about these other tools later on. I don't really wanna talk about them right now. I just wanna give you the basics of stuff. But we've got our trim tool, our selector tool, and our grabber tool. And they do pretty much what, uh, what you would think they do. The trim tool allows me to trim the beginning or the end of the clip. So if I go over here, and I wanted to make this 
How do you turn the MIDI into an audio file? Uh, don't, don't worry about that. That's more advanced. We're not going to be talking about that today. There is a way to do it. It's actually quite, uh, it's actually not that hard, but this is like basic basics. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to adjust the end of this clip. So right here, we got the end of the clip and I'm just using my trim tool and I'm just clicking and dragging it left and right around like this. So if I want to adjust the beginning of my clip, I can do that. Now, I want to just point out something to you real quick here is that, let me just move this over like this so it's in the middle. I cannot trim beyond the end of the clip. And I think that's here in the notes. Is it here in the notes today? No, it's in the notes for tomorrow. But let me just, let me just tell you real quick about that and we'll, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. But you can't trim beyond the end of your clip. You're restricted by the audio that's on your hard drive. So this clip here is a drum loop that's four bars long. <clears throat> I cannot drag it to the right or I cannot drag it to the left because there's only four bars of drum loop. But if I start here and this clip in real life is four bars long, but I'm only seeing two bars, I can drag it to the right or I can drag it, you know, like this. So if I was looking at this in the middle, I could drag this side to the left and I could drag this side to the right but only as long as the clip is. So if you're wondering why I can't, why you can't make your clip longer, it's because you cannot trim past the end of the clip. So that's trim. Next one here is selector tool. And that just lets me select different parts of my clip or different parts of my timeline here like this. And that just looks like a little line thing. I just click and I drag on it and like that, you know, let's just look at that. And if I want to delete something out, I can, delete something out. If I wanted to put my selector here, right here, you can see the line is flashing. If I want to cut this clip, I can hit command E and now it cuts it into two different clips. So now I've got my, this one here and I've got this one here. And that's the selector tool. And then finally we've got the grabber tool and the grabber tool just lets me move things around. Now I am moving very, very quick with this stuff. And that's because uh, we don't have a whole lot of time and so you really you're gonna have to kind of come back and work on it but realistically so just to put things in perspective I've been using Pro Tools since 1999 for a long time for like 10 years I was using Pro Tools every single day of my life for like you know on, on a day when I was actually working like four to six to eight hours a day maybe more a long time sitting in front of a computer using Pro Tools. That is thousands and thousands of hours of me using Pro Tools. So my the reason why I'm saying that is because I move really quick with Pro Tools and you can too. It's not gonna take you thousands of hours, but you're gonna have to, you know, just keep in mind, I've been doing this for a long time. So uh, you're going to have to get up to speed. It's gonna be slow at first, but that's okay. For me too, in the beginning, when I first started using Pro Tools, I was really slow with this stuff. What I'm hoping is to teach you the right habits to get into in the beginning that may seem a bit tricky at first. They might seem harder than if, you're, if you've already been using Pro Tools a little bit and you've already got your way that you do it, but you've only been using Pro Tools for maybe a couple months. My advice is please listen to my tips and my tricks. Even if they slow you down right now, use them because they will help you be faster in the future. And the quicker you can get on some of these things, the quicker you're gonna become a wizard at Pro Tools. So that's, I really, really recommend that. So why are you saying sheesh, Chris? <laughs> uh, was it something I said? All right, so over here, we have this here. So trim, uh, selector and grabber tool. Now all three of these together are the smart tool. So if I click on this up here, it is the smart tool here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this does. Now the smart tool allows me to use all three of these tools without selecting between them. So if I go back to my notes here, we can see here 
uh, shuffle slip spot. Oh no, that's the edit modes. So here we go. Our trim, our tools here. Trim selector and grabber. Uh, let me see. Pip says, does the trim tool only work for full bars? What if you only want to trim a portion of the bar? Uh, Pip, that's a great question. We're going to come back to that in just a second. That actually has to do with these edit modes that I skipped over. We're going to come back to the edit modes here in just a second. Absolutely. To answer your question real quick, though, you can totally uh, just do a portion of it. Um, and I'm going to explain how to do that in just a minute. Uh, so we got our trim selector and grabber tool. You can see here there's shortcuts for them, F6, F7, and F8. Uh, but my main advice is to use the smart tool to combine all of these together. And when you do that, it's going to basically make it so where you mouse over the, the, um, the clip is going to change which tool you're using. So if I want to use my selector tool, I'm going to be in the middle top. If I want to use my grabber tool, I'm going to be in the middle bottom. If I want to trim, it's going to be on the left or the right side. And if I want to fade, I'm going to be upper left, upper right. If I want to cross fade, I have to have two clips that are next to each other. Those two clips have to have overlapping audio. If it's two clips where the audio just ends right at the end, you cannot cross fade. There has to be overlapping audio because there has to be data to actually cross fade. So we're going to do that. Let's check this out. So you can see I've got my, I'm going to just move this into the middle of the screen here. And I'm going to put it in slip mode here. So now we can deal with this like, like wherever we want. And, and this kind of answers your question, Pip, if you're paying attention. Slip mode is, is the answer to your question. But we're going to talk about these modes in detail here in just a second. I'm going to close off some of these windows on the side here so we can see what's going on. <clears throat> and now, if we take a look at this, if I, let me just make this bigger. There we go. So if I go into the middle, up top, you can see it's my selector tool. I can click and I can select stuff. If I go on the bottom, watch what happens when I cross this middle line, boom, it now becomes my grabber tool. I can move it around. If I go here on the left-hand side, it's my trim tool. See how that tool changed? See right here, it's my selector. Down here, it's my uh, grabber. Here, it's my s trim tool. I can trim that. Over here on the right-hand side, it's my trim tool. And if I want to fade it, I can fade. Just go up to the top corner and do a fade. And if we listen to this, you can hear it getting louder. And it fades out. <clears throat> I could use my selector tool in the middle so let's just take out the snare drum right here. I just highlight it and I hit the delete key on my keyboard. And now that uh, snare drum is gone. Let me just get rid of these two hi-hats as well. <clears throat> yeah, super convenient. Yep. I'm a huge fan of the smart tool. Right? And that's how we can do a real quick edit of our file right here. And you can see everything. If I want to zoom in, I can zoom in and see stuff. The, just so you know, the shortcut keys for zooming is command brackets. Uh, the brackets are the, the square ones. Command brackets, left and right. Why is this back to not showing me? Sorry, I'm sorry. This keycaster thing is free. And it doesn't always work properly. All right, well, OK. So, yeah, Smart Tool is absolutely 100% dope. Okay, cool. So that's really what we're going to talk about with the tools for today. There's a lot more. You'll see a lot more tools. My advice is play around with this stuff, but we will be talking about it in more detail later. But uh, later, like tomorrow. But before we do that, let's talk about our edit modes over here. And the edit modes, let's back up one page here in our notes and talk about the edit modes. There are four edit modes, shuffle, slip, spot, and grid mode. And this deals with how you move clips around your uh, edit window. And Pip, this is answering your question here. So uh, edit modes, we've got um, shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. Shuffle moves clips together so there's no space between them. Slip mode allows you to move clips freely around the screen. Spot mode lets you uh, click on a clip to input its location with numbers. 
and then grid mode locks the clip movement to a grid of the uh, tempo, like your song. So the ones that you're gonna use mostly for audio, for music, if you're making beats, uh, if you're music doing music production and Pro Tools editing, stuff like that, is mostly gonna be slip and grid, F2 and F4. Uh, shuffle mode, you'll use that a lot for audiobooks and dialogue editing, stuff like that. You can also use it for beats, but not quite as much, I think. And then spot mode, you're going to use mostly for movies and post-production, stuff like that. You Stuff where you know you need to put it into an exact space in, in, a, in, a, like in a long movie or something like that. Like let's say there's an explosion and it has to happen exactly at uh, you know 25 minutes and 39 seconds and 5 frames then you can put that data directly into it. You can say, the explosion starts here, boom, and it just goes right there. So you don't have to like search around. Can you imagine working in a timeline that's like three hours long? I've never done, I've never done like feature film editing stuff, so I don't know what it's like, but I've done films that are like, you know, five minutes long or 10 minutes long. And, uh, and it's, it's a lot, even for that kind of length of stuff. So. Um, that's what your your different edit modes come into play. Let's just take a look at these in reality. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it into grid mode here, and you should definitely learn your shortcuts for this stuff. Uh, super, super important to learn the shortcuts for your grid modes, F1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the slip and the grabber. Slip and, well, slip is an edit mode and the grabber is the tool. They're very different. Slip is, okay, so so here, let, let's here, check this out, watch. Slip means that I can move my clip around, but I'm moving it around using the grabber. Does that make sense? They're, they're, they're not the same thing. So the edit modes have to do with how things move. So if I put it into grid mode, see now grid mode snaps it to the grid. See how it's like snapping to my grid? My grid is the blue bars here. If I wanted to change the grid to make the grid smaller, it's right here in the middle is my grid. So I can change my grid to the quarter notes and now I can move it around on my grid like that, okay? So that's my grid, and then I'm gonna use the grabber tool to actually move it around. So I hope that answers your question, that's the difference. And then slip mode turns the grid off. Essentially, it just turns your grid off. So like in Ableton Live, you can turn the grid off with Command 4, in, uh, in Logic, uh, you can turn off your uh, you can turn off your grid is what it's called, uh, and 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 Pro Tools it's just the same thing. You're just turning the grid off, but they call it slip mode, where it just slips around. Um, Pip says, if you have a MacBook with a touch bar, will these shortcuts show up or will it be something different? So the answer is the shortcuts will show up. If you have a touch bar, we should talk about this in Zoom and I can you can share your screen and I can show you exactly how to do it and other people can watch because you, there are there is a way you should set your uh, touch bar MacBook Pro up and I want to show you that. Um, it doesn't, Pro Tools did not go ahead, to, they did not go the extra step of making it into a specific touch bar utility um, so you have to learn the uh, function keys there are programs where if you wanted to make something and actually people have probably done it already there are utilities for making uh, like making it so the touch bar conforms to specific applications um, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that you could probably find something where people have actually already mapped this stuff out and made little icons for it, which actually would be really useful for Pro Tools editing. Um, I, I've never owned one of those MacBooks, so I don't know the exact answer for that, but I think uh, probably, but let's talk about that over in Zoom. I think that's a great thing to actually talk about and for us to you to share your screen, for me to walk you through it and everybody else can like watch it over in Zoom. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Remind me, uh, somebody, Somebody can write a little note here. Actually, I'll do it of stuff we need to talk about in in Zoom. Zoom. Whoops, not Zoom. Zoom. Uh, Mac. Book. Pro. Touch bar. And then what was the other one? There was like something else. Somebody mentioned. Oh, Pro Tools educational discount let's make sure we talk about that oh pricing pricing that's what it was there we go cool all right so i've got my uh i've got my twitch running on my ipad here 
so that I can see that I can scroll through the chat and stuff really easily, which is very, very useful. All right, so um, that's, our, that's our modes. Now let me just show you what the shuffle mode looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this out a couple times. And so shuffle mode, move this over here like this. Uh, let me go ahead and color code uh, a clip. Let me pull up my color window here. And I apologize, you can probably hear my dog snoring. My dog is a snorer. That's, that's just how it is. I, I, I just apologize. I shouldn't apologize because I think it's super cute that she snores. So you know what, I, re I rescind that apology. Okay, so uh, over here we've got three different clips. I've got them color coded and the reason I've got them color coded is so we can show you what shuffle mode does. Shuffle mode, I turn on shuffle mode using F1 and it pulls up my shuffle mode over here. And what I do is I click on this one. I wanna delete this one here. Close this window. Watch my yellow one, boom. The yellow just slams over. Shuffle mode, what it does is it gets rid of the spaces. It doesn't allow, it doesn't like let that space sit there. Let me undo that and put it into sh slip mode. Slip or grid mode is the same thing. Doesn't matter which one I use because watch what happens. I hit delete and it deletes that clip and everything stays where it is. But if I'm in shuffle mode, it puts that over there. And if I, if I highlighted a part of my clip here like this, and I hit delete, it slams that over as well. So that's what shuffle mode does. And like I said, shuffle mode is something that you're mostly gonna use if you're doing audio book editing or whatever. It's super, super useful for editing audio books for kind of uh, podcasts and things like that. It's great for that. For music, I, I there are uses for it. Um, they're pretty slim unless you have some way that you work that absolutely uses it all the time, which could be great. But I've never really seen much um, much use in audio ed for music editing. Uh, I, uh, Jay Lynn says, uh, do you have a pug? No, I've got a Brussels uh, Griffin. I'll show her to you in Zoom. She's super cute. But she has that kind of short face like a pug kind of thing. Yeah. I, I love her little set. She sounds like a little old man. Like, uh, you know, she's like that. I'm like, yeah. Sound like an old man. You're like my... My uh, my 2020, my 2021 dog, you know, you look like a little man, but you are a lady. It's awesome. <laughs> this, yeah, sounded familiar. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, that's shuffle mode, and um, and that's the modes. Now the other mode here is spot mode. I'm, the, it, spot mode is just you click on it and it pulls up a dialogue and you can put this in a different place. I can put this at bar 21, and uh, or 22 rather. Boom, and now it moves it over there, and I could put it back to bar 14, and that's that's what shelf that's what spot mode does. It's for post production and film and stuff like that. If you are doing that, then you're going to use spot mode all the time. If not, you're never going to use spot mode. I never even used spot mode at all until I had to start explaining Pro Tools to other people. When I started teaching Pro Tools, that was the only time I ever even opened up spot mode. I mean, I remember when I was doing uh, songs and like, you know, producing with Pro Tools for years and years and years, because I didn't start teaching Pro Tools until I'd been using it for about 10 years. And uh, <laughs> I never used spot mode. I, I opened it once, I was like, oh, that's what that does. Okay, cool close forever <laughs> and then you know the only reason i ever talk about it is just to talk about it to y'all um so monique says um i love that feature i'm just learning garage band and the spaces as well as fading out was difficult for me these shortcuts are great it makes me really excited about using pro yeah if you're coming from garage band it's going to be great to use pro tools uh logic does have some of these features logic and pro tools are very very similar they actually made logic to kind of fit into the same space as Pro Tools. Um, Ableton Live does not have a lot of these features. It's not made to fit into the same space as Pro Tools really, although you can kind of force it in there. It's a different DAW. But Logic and Pro Tools, as I like to say, Logic and Pro Tools are potatoes and potatoes, and Ableton Live is oranges. They're all edible, they're all round, but they're very different things. Um, potatoes and potatoes are exactly the same. Oranges are citrus fruit. <laughs> which is very different, but you can still stick it in your mouth. Um, so, you know, Ableton Live, Pro Tools, you can make beats on them, but the way you make those beats is very, very different, okay? Uh, and we'll, we'll show you that later on. But a lot of, just keep in mind, if you are using Logic, a lot of the stuff I'm explaining about, you could actually translate it to Logic fairly easily. So I'm gonna 
get up eight get out of here I'm gonna delete all this stuff over hell I'm gonna put this back over hell and let's see what else we gotta what am I doing stop that okay so oh oh yeah absolute versus relative grid mode yeah that's really important so if I go in here to my grid up here if I look at the grid here you can see this little arrow here and this arrow lets me switch between absolute and relative so absolute is blue relative is purple and what that does is hold on, I'm just trying to figure out which is my zoom out key. I'm using like five different shortcuts for five different things right now in my head and everything gets confused okay so let's say let's say I've got a, my beat is like this and but it doesn't start oops it doesn't start until right here now I've got my grid set to one bar if I put it in grid mode <clears throat> If I am in regular old grid mode, my blue grid mode, which is absolute, I want you to watch carefully what happens here. So I've got here, this is bar six, this is bar seven. My loop actually starts halfway between bar six and seven. If I click and drag this over, watch what happens. Let me drag it to bar eight, boom now it's starting directly on bar eight so let's let's just listen to this real quick i'm going to go ahead and loop these two bars here let's loop the let's loop all four bars right and that's a pretty cool little lead-in um, but if i wanted to drag this over to bar eight check this out watch what happens i move this over whoops Sorry, I, I had, sorry, too much selected. Okay, I drag this over to bar eight, boom. Now listen to it. Now it's all completely off. Uh, and the reason why it's off is because I'm using absolute grid mode, but the way the clip was cut was not cut to the grid. If I wanted this to work correctly, I would have to cut it right here and put it here and now let's delete that one I'd have to do a whole bunch of steps right I can force it to sound like what I was listening listening to before but uh, I had to do a whole bunch of steps let's undo all that stuff and let's do it without all those steps shall we uh, Jalen uh, yes, the answer is yes. I'll help you. Uh, I'll show you how to let's get Pro Tools yeah, on Zoom today. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, so let's go over here to the grid mode and change this to relative grid. And now let's move it over one bar and watch what happens. Boom. It keeps its relative position to my grid lines. So now when I hit play, It works perfectly, which is super, super awesome. And I can just move this around to any of these places. And it stays exactly in time, but I just moved it over one spot or another. Relative grid mode is one of my favorite um, additions to Pro Tools. It came around a long time ago, but still, whenever it's like the type of thing that whenever I talk about Pro Tools, I get kind of excited because, oh, that's really cool. Other DAWs, uh, kind of do relative grid mode automatically. I don't love the way that like Ableton Live does it because I, I have to think about it a little bit more. When I'm in Pro Tools, I don't have to think about it. It's like Ableton Live is kind of like using an automatic car and Pro Tools is like using a manual car in certain regards. For people who are just getting started, it's much easier to learn on an automatic. But if you want to really have a performance machine and get the most out of your editing and your, your car, you really want a manual transmission. Um, is there a shortcut for switching between absolute and relative? Yeah, so just hit the F4 key and it just, it just flips back and forth between relative and absolute grid mode. And then Ty says, how does the grid itself work? Well, the grid itself is right here. Here's the grid, and we can turn that on and off by clicking on this one here. So if your grid is off, if you're not seeing it, then right there. 
And then over here is our timer. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Actually, let me hold on before we before we get into that explanation. Let me just make sure we're good with um, the uh, edit mode. So the edit modes once one more time is shuffle, spot, slip, grid. The main two you're gonna be using is slip and grid. Slip is F2. Grid is F4. And then if you want to slip flip between uh, relative and absolute grid, just hit F4 a couple times, and that just flips between them. So that's that's all that stuff right there. Let me just go back to my notes before I come. I'm gonna tie. I'm gonna answer your question in just a second, but I just want to make sure we're good with that stuff. Okay, cool. All right. So all this other stuff is like housekeeping, and we don't really need to talk about that right now. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back here in a minute and do it. But before we take that break, uh, let's let's just do a real quick overview of what we're looking at on the screen here, because I I kind of dive right in. But I do want to just do a quick overview of everything over here. So right up here on the long the top here is our um, this is our, our grid mode here. It's for moving things around. Here's zooming in, zooming out, so we can make the audio waves bigger and smaller. This does not affect the sound at all. It literally just affects how big the uh, the audio wave is displaying on the screen. This one here is for my MIDI. So let's go ahead. Hold on, let me. Let's grab that MIDI clip and bring it back in. Whoops, not that one, this one here. There we go. I'll just move this over. Let's actually just keep that where it was. So now. Right, cool. So we got that. Now, if I wanted to, let's say I want to take this and, and, and edit this a little bit more. Uh, where, where was, oh, oh, sorry, the reason why I was talking about this is because of my MIDI notes here. Sorry, I just got sidetracked, I sidetracked myself. If I click on this one down here, my clip here, I can make these MIDI notes. Why are we not, why is that showing the middle of my screen like that? Okay, well they're not, they should be, oh, I know why, it's because we're in clips mode here. Let's go to, okay, here we go. So if I do this, if I put this in notes mode, and I wanna see more notes on my screen, or like I want it to be thicker, I can click on that right there, and it makes my notes on the screen thicker. Now, this is, I, I want to, I don't really want to go too deep into this because it's talking about MIDI stuff and we're not talking about MIDI stuff today. But uh, I just want to point out that we can do all of our editing of everything on one window right here and on the window, which is actually really useful for stuff. And I love this feature even uh, more than like, I, I love Ableton Live. I use Ableton Live for my production all the time, but this is a feature that I love in Pro Tools way more. And it's the only DAW that I know of that has it like this, where you can actually do all your editing right here on the window. Every other DAW opens up a separate window for your MIDI, which is fine for the most part, but once I want to line things up exactly, if I wanted to go in here and line stuff up, then uh, I can do that here, and I can make sure everything is like exactly aligned. Whereas, including my MIDI, whereas with other DAWs, Pro Tools, with Ableton Live or Logic, I wouldn't be able to do that. All right, uh, these here just show me different views, these windows here. And if you wanna, if you wanna save a view, like if I go in here and I do that and I wanna make it like that, I can hold down Command and click it and it, it, it saves that as like a, 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 a zoom view. Over here is uh, just puts my selected track on my screen right there, just makes it full up the whole screen just real quick like that. Uh, it's called Zoom Toggle. Over here I've got my Zoom tool, and I can click on that and I can zoom in, I can zoom in, I can hold down Option or Alt and zoom out. And I've also got a single zoom versus a normal zoom, which single zoom just zooms once and flips back to the tool you were using previously. Over here I've got my um, trim tool, my selector tool, my grab tool, I've got my uh, scrub mode. I can scrub on my audio. Totally, totally not useful at all unless you're used to scrubbing on audio. I don't, I don't know anybody who does that anymore who uses it. I, I'm sure there's somebody out there who uses it for some specific thing. I don't know what it is, so yeah. Uh, and then we have got our pencil tool. We'll come back and we'll talk about the pencil tool when we're talking about automation. Now, getting closer to answering your question, um, Ty, is this main counter right here. Here's like, we've got like a kind of our area that shows us information about what's going on. And we'll come back and talk about this on a couple of other days. There's some stuff in here we don't need to talk about, but real quick, this part right here, we wanna make sure the counter, if you're working with timed information, like if you're producing in Pro Tools or you're working with uh, a mix, 
that you're working on a mix that has a lot of, you know, the timing is important for stuff for like delays and things like that. You want to make sure that this says bars and beats right here. Our other choices are minutes and seconds, time code, feet frames, samples. But really what we want is to have bars and beats. And then I also like to have a sub counter here. And the sub counter uh, is minutes and seconds. And that way I can see what my minutes and seconds are of stuff. But I can also see what my, my bars and beats are. And that's how I like to look at my screen right here. This main counter is connected to my grid over here. So if my main counter is set for bars and beats. Then my grid, I can now set my grid to show different subdivisions of those bars and beats. So if I wanted to edit by my quarter note, I can do that. And now it's adjusting by the quarter note here. And if you don't see the grid, that's because that little thing is off. So if you're looking at your window and it looks like this and there's no grid and you're like, Tony, I don't have a grid. What's going on? Oh my gosh, help me, help me, help me. Well, just click that button right there and it turns your grid on and off. So I, I think that answered your question, Ty. Uh, that's how the grid works. Uh, we've also got a nudge beneath it, which again, we're gonna come back and talk about that. Then we have our transport over here, uh, play and stop. I've got my play set to loop. You can right click on it to play back however you want. And I would just recommend keeping loop on and off. Um, and then also just remember spacebar is uh, your, is your uh, start and stop. That's the space bar. So just hit the space bar to start and stop stuff. Uh, and then we've got here, reward, uh, rewind, fast forward, all that stuff right there. So you can rewind and fast forward. Um, and then you've got like a little level here. You can click on that to make sure it's not, you know, to turn off the clip or whatever. And there's some other little buttons here. There's, this is your transport. There's actually a lot more we can talk about the transport and we will talk about that on another time. I'm just giving you the, you know, the quick grand tour here. Over here on the left hand side, you can see that my screen, I'm only looking at a few things here. And that's because I can turn things on and off right here. Uh, and usually what I look at is not my time code. I don't know why the time code is there actually. I usually do not look at my time code. I usually look at minutes and seconds. Yeah, like that. And then the tempo and the markers are the ones I usually look at. But you have other options here. We can also put the meter, the key, the chords. Stuff like that in. Key is useful if uh, if you are using the key, if you're changing keys and stuff like that, or if you want to make sure that things fit into the right key. The key is useful, but it's not quite as useful as like knowing your key in like Pro Tools or, or I mean not Pro, uh, Pro Tools, or like in uh, Ableton Live or Logic or something like that. The key becomes a little bit more useful. This I think is just showing you the key. I don't think it actually changes anything uh, inside of like how the DAW works. So I don't really look at it too much. Um, markers we're going to talk about another time. Super, super important. So just leave that open. So this is all the stuff that goes across your timeline up here. And then over here on the left hand side is all the stuff for what we're viewing on the left over here for our track view. So they have a lot of options here. And I would say depending on what your machine is, or like how big your monitor is, you should show or hide different things here. So for example, if you're on a MacBook Pro, like a 13 inch MacBook Pro, you don't want to show too much because you need all your real estate for editing. You need to be able to edit more stuff. But if you're on, I've got like a 24 inch monitor, a 20 inch monitor. I'm not sure how big this monitor is. It's pretty big, 27 inch maybe, I'm not sure. It's pretty big. So I've got lots of real estate. So I usually I usually like to look at my inserts and my sends. Definitely, you always want to have the I/O and the track color here. <clears throat> uh, you don't really need the other ones here. Maybe real time properties if you're doing a lot of uh, MIDI editing, but I turn that off usually. And again, we're going to come back and talk about that stuff later on. If I'm not talking about it, it means it's probably not important. If you have a question about it, please ask. But I might say, let's wait a couple weeks because it's it's important to kind of not overload you with too much stuff. Uh, comments, no. Preamps, no. Instrument, eh, no, not really. Even when you're dealing with MIDI stuff, usually you don't need the instrument here. But the inserts A through E and sends A through E, yeah, I usually do like to show those. But again, if I'm working on a machine that doesn't have a, a big screen, then these are the two things that I look at here. It's just the I.O. and the track color. So 
Boom. All right. I think, I think we're pretty good. Uh, we're gonna talk about this over here another time, the tracks list over here on the left, and the MIDI clips over, uh, the MIDI, uh, the, the uh, clips list over here. We kind of talked about that enough that you can kind of get going with stuff. So let's do this. Let me stop the recording here.